Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Michelle Arnold. She's with the University of Kentucky, a ruminant extension veterinarian there. Today we're going to talk about something that's been in the news a lot, and it's about the screw worm. And we've heard about screw worm before, but what makes this different? Well, this is actually the New World screw worm, um, which is native to the Western Hemisphere, but we do not have it in this country. And um, we eradicated it in, in the mid-60s. Had a, had a small incursion back in 2016 in Florida in the Keys, but it didn't last very long. So this is a, this is a new threat to, um, to the United States. And the importance of it is the female, the adult female lays eggs in a wound or, or in a mucous membrane. It doesn't even have to be a wound. But the difference is these maggots that hatch out actually feed on living flesh, on live flesh, versus other maggots which, which eat dead flesh, which is not so bad, that these actually burrow in deeply uh, and, and consume living flesh. So they can actually lead to death within about a week if they go untreated. And so they, the Secretary of Agriculture has stopped the movement of cattle. Correct. It can be in any warm-blooded animal. So dogs, uh, dogs, cats, some, sometimes birds, not, not quite as often, uh, horses, people, anything can, can actually carry this larvae into the United States. And that's what we're afraid of is if it goes undetected and those larvae actually make it to the out of the wound and into the ground, well, then we've started, we've started a new cycle, life cycle. How did this progression start? We had the flies confined down past Panama since the mid-60s with very few incursions north. But um, as there's a lot of travel from South America and Central America, uh, they think it probably hitched a ride on either people or pets. So the only control measures we have uh, or the release of sterile male flies. And the only facility is down in Southern Panama. So as it got beyond where those, where those sterile males were, then it could continue to, to go north. They irradiate these, um, these male flies so that they are sterile, and then they drop them from airplanes. They'll actually do a plane drop. Every time a sterile male breeds the female fly, her eggs will be, her eggs will, <clears throat> will not survive. So that, and it, over time, we end up with many, many more sterile males than we have the, the true fertile males. And that will eventually wipe out the population. The outbreak in Florida took a couple of years, to, I think two to three years to wipe them out completely. And that was not very big. That was on an island, basically, you know, the Keys, it's in the keys. So um, yeah, it's and it takes a lot of money. And the production losses caused by this pest are not cheap either. General consumers need to be concerned as they're traveling back and forth, correct? Correct. Um, Central America, South America, even, even Cuba, Haiti have, have this um, have this pest. Uh, and if you travel with your with your pets, they will need to be uh, you have, have an eye on them. Make sure they are not behaving strangely, because uh, it's painful. It's very painful as the those um, um, maggots feed. So you're going to see some depression and you know, some irritability, maybe shaking the head, uh, discharge, a, a strange discharge, sort of reddish colored, and a, a terrible smell. Foul smelling is always part of this description. And you mentioned that sometimes you don't even have to have a wound. It could get in the ear of your pet or in the nose. And in people as well. Um, so other types of maggots will only be found in the wound. But this can actually hit um, uh, where there's not a wound. Think about um, a, a cow calving in that genitalia. That's a, that's a big area too. So if we see maggots on cattle, should we be concerned? Yes, definitely we need to be concerned, even uh, no matter where you are in the United States, because this could actually happen anywhere. So definitely call your veterinarian, have them come out, take samples, and have those submitted to, um, they can submit them here, and then we send them on to, for identification.
So we appreciate you watching the Farm and Home Show, and we'll see you next time.